Thank you so much for joining CEO Wise. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Now, you started your entrepreneurial journey um, in the retail space after you were discovered, or and there you were discovered by uh, a billionaire businessman. Mm. Now, what was your journey? Um, Taking back to that time, how did you get started? So I started off in, in a family business, yeah, and then <clears throat> for various reasons, uh, decided to go on my own. Um, got into this retail business, which, I was, which was a friend of mine's business, which was battling at the time, with a view of trying to turn it around. I battled to turn it around, and eventually came up with a campaign that worked, and that got me into the, the newspaper and actually set the, the, the business on a different trajectory. And that's when I was discovered by this dollar billionaire. And um, he then offered to back me. I didn't believe him because that doesn't happen. Um, two weeks later, he, he phoned me up and said, what, what am I still doing there? And um, the rest is history. You know, uh, I, after that, I started a retail food business a hot, a hot dog the, a business called the New York Sausage Factory. Um, I failed at that, opened up a second one, sold that business and then got into the vehicle security business for seven years. I was pretty good at it, not great but good. Um, learned a huge amount in, in that seven years but hated what I was doing, I was selling fear. Um, okay. And then Three months before I got married, at the age of uh, 34, I decided to resign and uh, to start what was to become Race Corp. It wasn't called Race Corp at the time, but it, it became Race Corp. Yeah. And when your first business failed, um, your 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 businessman or your your mentor said some words which has stuck with you to today. What what was that? His words to me were. Did I back you or did I back the business? And I said, you backed me. So he says, right now the business has failed. If you walk out that door, you have failed. So what would you do differently if you had to do it again? And I said, I changed the menu, the venue, the pricing, etc. And um, and uh, he backed me a second time. He asked you, you said he asked you um, what you would change. If you knew that, why did you not change that beforehand? Just, uh, no one's ever asked me that question. It's a good question. I think what, what, what happens is that, and, and I'm quite aware of this now, is that very often uh, as entrepreneurs, we invest in a, an idea, we invest in infrastructure, we invest in process, in people, etc., and it doesn't work. And it feels very hard to, to dislocate from, from that investment because you, you know, you're in. And so, you almost will go down with, with, with that mistake, then change, then change it because it feels like, you know, you've put so much money or time or effort into yes. it. And that's what I think what happened there that I had, I had, my big mistake there was the, the venue. And I didn't, I didn't want that to be an issue because I had done so much research in inverted commas beforehand, mm. um, or what I'd call bullshit research beforehand in, in terms of, justifying why I should have been in that location. So now I was locked into that. I'd done the research, I believed it, I had sold it, yeah. but I was wrong, no, you know? And it's hard to retract from that in that context. The Economist said that Ray's Corp is one of the only true... Um, Not one of them. The only. <laughs> the, <laughs> the only genuine... Yeah, the only in, genuine incubator, incubator in Africa. In Africa. Yeah. Um, what exactly does Ray's Corp do? So we are uh, we support entrepreneurs through their journey at various stages. We and you support over five hundred businesses. Yeah, it's incredible. Yeah, we got six operations around South Africa: one in Angola, one in Tanzania, and soon other African countries. Um, and we effectively have a very um, evolved selection process for entrepreneurs, where we don't use business plan as a as a mechanism. To determine whether or not we get involved with that that entrepreneur, we look at them, or we look for what we call blue heart, that ability to stand up again and again and again and again. Yeah. Um, so we have a, quite a strong selection tool or process, and then we have a very strong uh, a strong program um, and process to ensure that entrepreneurs have the highest possibility of succeeding. Mm. 
Now, I've had my own business, Draft Interactive, for, for 16 years now, but I still consider myself to be a business owner as opposed to an entrepreneur. Do you think there's a difference? I do. I do. Um, and I would ask you to go and read a book called The E-Myth Revisited by a guy called Michael E. Gerber. And he's got a very simple model um, around entrepreneurship. Effectively, he says the reason why 96% of businesses fail is because they have what he calls an entrepreneurial spasm. They wake up one day and say, oh, I can be an entrepreneur. Mm. But they very often are the technician, they're the doer. So you're in the advertising space, design space, you were probably a designer or you're yeah. right? Exactly, yeah. Right, so you were the technician. So his model is that you've got three tiers. You've got the technician at the bottom, the manager in the middle, and the entrepreneur at the top. And very few transition from technician to entrepreneur well. Mm. Um, and they basically are in a little vortex in the, in the technician mode. And every time they try and employ it, then they, they, they have to go back into technician mode. And because of that, they're not in entrepreneur mode. And what he determines as entrepreneur mode is somebody who is outward looking, looking for opportunity and growth opportunity for the business as a predominant part of their day, mm -hmm. not as in technician mode. Mm -hmm. And that person is also um, building the business in terms of the structure, the processes, etc. And you say that um, success is not always determined by money. But um, I always find that a lot of the time people who have money say that. That um, uh, So do you think your perspective changes of success, the, the more successful you get? Success shouldn't be about money. Um, but I would, I would say that when you are not making money, it's very hard to feel successful without it. Yeah. Okay? So I, I would agree to that. But it's Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Once your cert certain things are taken care of, like I can pay a month end, okay, which is very, very important. Mm -hmm. So does that mean that when you have one rand more than that, that you're successful? So when does success begin or end? Mm -hmm. okay, is it now at a million rand or two million? There's no, there's no number. That the issue, and I've been there, is that you can be in a business and you can be good at it and, and, and financially successful, but it can be absolutely miserable in that business. That to me is not success. And you say success and failure is, is paradoxical. What do you mean by that? Yeah, because when you start succeeding, then I see far too often entrepreneurs um, put, take their foot off the pedal, become complacent, and it becomes the seed of their failure. Okay? Their, their success becomes the seed of their failure. So, so to me, that's the paradoxical nature. You don't think selling hours is a viable um, long-term model for a business? Do you think young entrepreneurs should look at more at uh, selling a product rather than a service? No, they can sell a service uh, and a product. You, you don't necessarily have to sell a service in hours. You can sell it as a product. Okay. Yeah. To me, the, the, the emphasis of, of small businesses in the service space should be about selling value and not selling time.